Now, to understand how America not only became the number one superpower in the world using the US dollar, but remains the number one superpower, we have to go back to the end of World War II. Europe was a complete and utter disaster. Everything west of Russia was completely war-torn and England had been significantly bombed. There was a great restoration event that needed to happen if Europe was going to return to its former glory. Now, I say if because it didn't have to be restored. It could have taken a completely different trajectory, maybe receding into the undeveloped third world, or it could have embraced the Soviet model and come under Stalin's <laughs> care. But the key factor here is US intervention. The US wanted a free market world with itself as leader of the pack. So it came to the rescue of Europe, but it didn't do this for free. It bailed Europe out on American terms setting up a global currency supremacy like nothing the world has ever seen. And this power is so incredible that today they are still number one despite racking up crazy national debts. I'll explain how at the end, so stick around for that. But first, let's see how we got here. After World War II, the world economy was completely f***ed. Many countries were heavily in debt to the US and their industries had been totally destroyed. Out of this destruction, the US emerged as the world's most powerful economy with its industries not only firing, but on steroids from wartime measures and importantly, with a currency backed by massive gold reserves. The US dollar was one stable motherfucker. To help bring balance to the global economy after the chaos of the Great Depression and the war that it whipped up, the Allied nations got together and created the Bretton Woods system. Very simply, this system pegged the US dollar to gold and the other world currencies were pegged to the US dollar. In other words, the US dollar became the world's primary reference currency. I might add, pegging everything to the dollar was not the initial proposal. Keynes himself tried to have a global measure as the standard, but the US shot that idea down in flames very quickly. Wondering why? Well, you'll soon find out. Essentially, under the Bretton Woods system, the US dollar became the anchor of the global financial system. And this created a dollar zone where countries traded with each other, but they needed US dollars to do it. For example, if Japan wanted to buy something off Germany, both nations would use US dollars. It acted as a common median of exchange. And so countries maintained reserves of US dollars. This arrangement meant non-stop demand for the dollar. Countries needed dollars, even if the US wasn't directly involved in the transactions. Wait a minute, what did you say? This was an absolutely huge development in global economics. It's really hard to comprehend the enormity of this chess piece move. It would be like during the height of the Roman Empire, trade between ancient China and India was being conducted in Roman denarii, meaning both ancient China and India would have to have not only good relations with Rome, but would have to constantly trade with Rome to get more of its currency just to survive. I don't believe it. I can't believe it. After the war, the US also had a significant trade surplus, meaning it exported more shit than it imported. And who would have guessed, but countries devastated by the war, desperately needed to buy goods and services from somewhere. This further increased 
demand for US dollars. This sent the international economy into a spiral of addiction and dependence on the US dollar for everything. On top of this, and as I mentioned before, many nations owed war debts to the US. So they were dependent on acquiring US dollars to repay their debts anyway. Now these debts were made through the Lend-Lease Program. During the war, the US sent an estimated $50 billion in aid, equivalent to about $750 billion today to help the Allies. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got to lend some money to beat some Nazis and some Japs. United Kingdom, get $31.4 billion. France, $3.2 billion. China, $1.6 billion. Soviet Union, $11 billion. Wait, how'd that get in there? Oh well, everything's gotta go. But remember, the US wanted to establish itself as the new dominant power in a free market world and knew that just demanding repayment from war-torn European nations would hinder their ability to recover. But way more importantly, they also knew that not helping out would lead to economic instability, which would drum roll please, foster the spread of communism. To stop the commies rising, the Marshall Plan was implemented in 1948 and the US provided around 13 billion, around 173 billion in today's money to help Europe rebuild. This meant, in practice, many of the war debts under the Lend-Lease program were forgiven or forgotten. Yes, you heard that right. While many countries owed significant sums of money to the US, most of these debts were either forgiven or restructured or became part of broader US influence. The US leveraged these debts to assert global leadership. Just remember that when you hear the media and politicians going on about national debt and government spending, the US literally let entire countries off the hook, no questions asked, $750 billion worth of debt forgotten, Poof. Poof. and the global economy got better. No apocalypse, just unprecedented periods of economic growth and wealth creation. But I digress. The US became the central pillar of the global economic system because the world depended on dollars to survive. Now you're probably thinking, well, that's the end of the story, but we haven't even gotten to the biggest miracle in economic history. One so spectacular, it makes Jesus turning water into wine seem like that lame trick your uncle did at family gatherings. Hey, got your nose. In 1971, President Nixon ended the Bretton Woods system, meaning the US dollar was no longer backed by gold. This also meant other currencies were free from being pegged to the dollar. It would be completely logical to think that this would have weakened the dollar's importance, but nothing changed. Dependence on the dollar was set in stone. Today, the US dollar remains the dominant currency in global trade and finance because the US economy is large and stable and safe to invest in. Most international trade transactions are settled in US dollars. Many countries hold large reserves of US dollars in their central banks and major commodities like oil, gold and natural gas are still priced in dollars. Now, why does this matter? Great question. Here's the miracle. Because there is guaranteed demand for US dollars globally, the US can run crazy trade deficits and budget deficits, i.e. spending more than it earns. And other countries and companies are always willing to lend to the US or buy US bonds because they need US dollars in return anyway. Oh my God. This is the biggest magic trick of world economic history. What happened to the British Empire when it went into the red? 
it collapsed. What happened to the Roman Empire? It collapsed. Every time a major power goes into the red, it starts fading away. For the United States, from 1971 to 2020, its power increased along with its trade deficit. It is the only power in the world that became stronger as a result of going deeper into deficit. That has never happened before and it's all thanks to maintaining a strict monopoly over international payments. It is the only country in the history of the planet that has had a currency which was in demand people wanted the dollar even if they didn't want to buy anything from the US. Because when you put petrol in your car even if it's from a Dutch company and it buys oil drilled in Nigeria and there's absolutely no American involved at all because the whole process is denominated in US dollars when you fill up your petrol tank you are demanding US dollars. <gasps> the control of the international payment system is what allows the United States to be superpower number one in a globalized world. Way more than its reliance on US military control. Today most international trade relies on the SWIFT system and US banks, i.e. if you trade in dollars you must interact with US controlled institutions somewhere along the line. Let's say you're a company outside the US and you want to trade in dollars. You usually need to interact with US banks that hold large reserves of US dollars or that can facilitate transactions. Even banks in other countries rely on US banks to execute payments and transfers because they don't hold sufficient dollar reserves. And here's the important part. When transactions are routed through US banks, they are subject to US laws, including sanctions against countries or individuals. For example, if a country or a company tries to send money to an entity under US sanctions, US banks can block the transaction or freeze assets. So because the dollar is the backbone of the international payment system and it all filters through US financial systems somehow, the US weaponizes this fact as its tool in foreign policy. Crippling economies depending on international trade at the push of a button. No armies, no nukes. Fear of being cut out from the global economic system is enough to keep everyone in check. But there is a new threat to this hegemony. Join me for part two and we'll go through exactly what that is. Now, if you like this video, give it a like and a comment and subscribe for more. Remember, I am, you are, we are a mystery. I am on Patreon. Please follow the link in the description and sign up for free. We are trying to build a revolutionary community over there. So go become a member for free and join the conversation. If you can contribute financially, that would help a lot towards making this content.